Hey, this is Jeff from Wonder Dog Sports. Welcome to part seven of my How to Win at Sports Betting video series. In this video, I'm gonna explain the mathematical concept of variance and the law of large numbers. I'll talk to you about variance in sports betting and compare it to variance in other kinds of investments. I'm gonna provide guidance on one of the most common questions from new sports bettors. How many picks should you be making? Finally, I'll share with you why winning at sports betting often feels like losing and how to handle that. Guys, we all want to win at sports betting. If we didn't want to win, we wouldn't do it. I provide sports betting advice for a living, and if my clients didn't expect me to help them win, they wouldn't hire me. And while you should expect to win with my picks, that statement needs qualification. You should expect to win over the long haul. Over the short term, anything can and does happen thanks to a little annoying thing called variance. Variance, simply stated, is a measure of how far a set of numbers are spread out from one another. Low variance means the numbers in a set are very tightly gathered, and high variance means that the numbers are very widely spread apart. Bear with me on some math. I promise you it's gonna be worth it. In this example of two sets of data, the average for both set A and B is 50, but the variance of set A is very low while the variance of set B is very high. Okay, so now that we have that defined, why does variance matter in sports betting? Because it will massively affect your experience and your psyche, and thus your ability to win or lose. I think it's self-evident that we would all prefer lower variance, right? It'd be great if we could just win every night without a lot of fluctuation, but that's just not how it works. Sports betting guys has very high variance. In fact, based on my experience, you should expect about five to 20 times as much variance in betting sports than you would experience in betting the broad stock market. That's just an unavoidable truth. But while variance will be very high in the short term, it will reduce over the long term. This is very good news because it means that if we can manage patience, we can smooth out the ups and downs. Smaller numbers, guys, equals higher variance. It is extremely important to note that thanks to the law of large numbers, the, few ga the fewer games we bet, the higher the variance. What does this mean? It means that the chances of winning a lot or losing a lot increases as the number of bets decrease. It also means that over the short run, sports betting picks have a much higher variance than they do over the long haul. And sports betting is inherently higher variance than say the stock market. The stock market as a whole tends to change very little on a daily basis, usually less than 1%. Meanwhile, your sports betting bankroll will see much larger swings daily. If you ignore the advice in my previous video on bankroll management and proceed to overbet your bankroll, your daily swings could be as much as 25, 50, or even 100% of your bankroll. But guys, even if you're practicing sound money management, you should expect to see swings in your bankroll at least five times higher than, than the stock market and occasionally 10 to 20 times as much. Let's come back to the law of large numbers. Think of it this way. If we flip a coin, we expect to see heads 50% of the time and 50% of the time we'll see tails. If we flip a coin 3,500 times, we would expect to be very close to 1,750 heads and 1,750 tails. It would be extremely rare with that many trials to vary far off of 50%. This is the law of large numbers in action. But if we flip it just 200 times, we are much more likely to vary off the expected 100 heads and 100 tails. It would not be unreasonable to see 60 heads, for example, on 200 trials. And if we cut that down to 10 flips, we could easily see 80% or more of heads. The fewer the trials, the higher the variance. Another way to think about this is to compare it to diversification in the stock market. If you buy a broad index funds that have many stocks in them, your yearly return is gonna be relatively stable. Some stocks have very high variance on their own, fluctuating wildly, but throw 500 of them together and they bounce each other out. The same holds true for sports betting, guys. Let's go into one more example to make sure this hits home. We're gonna talk some sports here. Dwight Howard is one of the best NBA players in history at hitting shots. He's made 58.6% of his shots. And if we had to guess what his shooting percentage would be over the next month or the next week or even the next game, we would be wise to guess around 59%. But the reality is that his shooting percentage could vary greatly from that expected number, especially over small samples. And of course, that's exactly what we see. In the 2010-2011 regular season, in the 78 regular season games in which he played, Howard's field goal percent per game ranged from 25% up to 100%. He had games during the season in which he went four for 13 
five for 15, five for 13, five for 12, eight for 19. Pretty bad nights. In addition though, he had games in which he went eight for eight, 10 for 11, eight for nine, 11 for 13, and nine for 11. In early December of that season, Howard had a stretch of four games in which he shot a combined 28 for 58, just 48%. Now, does that mean we should just say he's a 48% shooter? Of course not. It simply means he was off for a stretch of about 60 shots, but that long-term he'll return to his expected rate of 59%. Another quick example, Ray Allen, one of the best long range shooters of all time, finished the 2008-2009 playoffs with an eight game stretch in which he went 38 for 107, 35.5%. In the playoffs that year, Allen had an 11 game stretch in which he went 40 for 116, that's 34.5% which was 24% below his career average. Is this strange to see great shooters like this perform miserably? Not really. Over the course of a long career, every great shooter is going to go on some awful runs. It's inevitable. The same thing is gonna to happen to you guys in sports betting. So, just as elite shooters like Howard and Allen will have short-term stretches where they vastly underperform or overperform their average, we will see the same thing in sports betting. And this is 100% normal. It's due to variance, which is a statistical certainty and cannot be avoided. But that doesn't mean we can't do some things to reduce variance, which again would be nice. You can mitigate the effects of variance by playing more games. By now, this should be pretty clear to you. Over a small sample, for example, 100 games, the variance in your sports betting picks and results is gonna be high. Over a large sample though, say 3,000 games, the variance will be much, much lower. So, if your expected outcome is positive, defined as hitting over 52.38% for regular sports bets, it's better to play as many games as possible. This will let the true value shine through, thanks to the law of large numbers by reducing the role of short-term luck. So, guys, don't shy away from playing every pick you feel you have a positive expected outcome on. This is why I pick a relatively large number of games compared to most handicappers. This, guys, is what all elite professional sports bettors do. They play a lot of games. It increases their expected profit while simultaneously reducing variance. Now, let's bring this home by talking about the psychological effect of variance in sports betting. What does variance do to your psyche? Guys, it wreaks havoc. Even when winning over the long haul, variance can make it feel very much like we're losing. Grasping this concept will help you weather the inevitable ups and downs that come with a high variance of depth. And it explains why the impatient gambler loses and why those betting a small number of picks each day may have a harder time with the mental side of sports betting. Let me repeat, losing streaks happen. They're built into the fabric and life of sports betting thanks to the laws of statistics. A key to being a winning sports better is to understand and embrace the realities instead of fighting them. To demonstrate, let's again turn to the stock market one last time. According to a recent Money Magazine article, had you invested in the S&P 500 index fund in August of 1997 and sat tight there for 10 years, you'd have racked up an 88% return. But had you missed just the 20 best days in the market over that period, you would have netted a 20% loss. Let that sink in. Plus 88% versus minus 20% based on 20 days during a 10 year period. Out of 3,650 days, 20 were big winners and the rest in aggregate were losers. Stock returns also come in bursts. The same is true in sports betting, especially when picking underdogs in money line sports like baseball, hockey, or soccer. Even more variants. Guys, streaks happen, winning streaks happen, and as much as we wish to deny their existence, losing streaks happen too. Even in a season where you hit an unbelievable 60% winners, there will be losing days, losing weeks, and maybe even a losing month. Consistent day after day winning just does not happen in sports betting. You can't get too bent out of shape when losing happens. If you expect losing streaks, you won't get too upset when they inevitably happen. Getting upset, guys, only makes things worse as your emotion forces you to do the wrong thing, including chasing or stopping you need to stay the course. Again, shooting for a realistic amount of winners over the long haul. As mentioned in a prior video in this series, if a losing day or losing week gets you too upset, you're probably betting too much. This is why sound bankroll management is key to becoming a winning sports bet. You need to be able to take those short-term hits 
so you can be around for the long-term spoils. Begin to manage your sports wagering like a business that doesn't need a good day or a good week or even a good month, but rather needs to show a profit at year's end. If you do all this, will it all be roses? Unfortunately not. That's because there's not much difference psychologically between winning and losing. Let me explain. In fact, if you want to know what winning feels like, it feels a hell of a lot like losing. And yes, you heard that right. Let's say that you're having success gambling. Let's say you're at a long-term 55% very profitable handicapper, yet somehow it doesn't feel like it's supposed to feel. Here's why. Let's say you average four picks per day. If you're a 55% handicapper making four plays per day, this here is your statistical expectation. Let's look at what this table is really telling us. It tells us that the chance that you'll have a winning day after the Sportsbooks Commission is less than 50-50. To have a winning day, day in this scenario, you need to win three out of four or four out of four picks. The chance of that happening is just 39%. So over 60% of the time, you as a winning gambler will be losing money. Let that sucker sink in. Now you can see where the problem lies. A gambler goes two and two on his well-capped plays, or one and three, or maybe the rare 0 and four. He decides he needs to make money that day and plays an ill-advised game. Or he bets too much trying to catch up. Unconsciously, he has just reduced his chances of being a 55% capper, even though he is. It takes a substantial amount of bankroll discipline and the right mindset to accept losing 60% of the time in order to win. And that's because winning can often feel like losing. Guys, this really has to sink in. Until this is understood, even a winning handicapper can show a loss at year's end. To recap, remember, variance is inevitable in sports betting and it is high over the short term. You can reduce your variance by making many picks in the same way you diversify in the stock market. At 55% winners with four picks a day, you're gonna record 60% losing days while winning overall. And even at 60% winners, at four bets per day, you're gonna lose 52.5% of all the bets days you bet. As counterintuitive as it may sound, winning feels like losing. Guys, don't fight the losing days or weeks. There's gonna be many of them, accept them. Take a deep breath, practice sound money management, expect losing streaks, and ride them out until the winning streak comes along. See you in the next video.